Now, tonight, let's take a look at some of the issues that have come up in this whole conversation. I'm being joined by one of the frontline aspirants in the race, a two-term uh, governor serving his second term in office, the governor of Kogi State in Nigeria's North Center State. Now, Governor Yaya Bello joins us live here in our studio in Abuja. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us. Thank you very much, yeah. Mr. Shane Okimbaloye. Thank you so much for coming. Good evening to all Nigerians watching this program and viewers across the world. Thank you so much. Um, <coughs> how does this come to you? I'd like to show you this letter, uh, this communication that came from some of your colleagues from the northern region of the country, signed by uh, at least not, uh, nothing less than 10 of them. Uh, if you look at that letter, which states that uh, they are conceding that the presidential ca candidate of the APC should come from the south. How does that come to you? Uh, first of all, before I uh, attempt to respond to your question, let me use this opportunity to commiserate, to condone the victims, the families, the people, the government, and the governor of Ondo State for the dastard act carried out by cowards, the criminals who went to a church that is carrying on their peaceful worship and murdered them. My heart goes out to them. And uh, taking it from there, my dear brother and dear Nigerians, that is the reason why we are in this race. And I wish those that lost their lives eternal rest. And I wish those who have sustained various degrees of injuries quick recovery and the whole of the people a quick recovery from the trauma. By the special grace of God, all this shall come to an end when we come on board. And now to your question, Mr. Shio Kimbaloe. First of all, I question and I query that particular letter or statement. Because we in PGF, whether PGF not or PGF generally, when we come to a conclusion about a topical issue, there used to be a communique. There will be press, uh, um, press um, uh, interview by all the governors. We see all of us will flank each other and there will be a press interview. There will be first notice of meeting. There will be meeting uh, um, uh, 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 minute, uh, minutes of meetings and all of that that follows a meeting. I am from the North. I'm one of the members of the PGF. I was never notified. And I don't think majority of us have such notification. That is one. Secondly, if you look at the convention, that the last national convention where all the governors, PGF, came about a consensus or um, uh, unity list, you will see how each and every governor endorsed that document. Now put that side by side with this document that is flying around in the social media. You see a signature list and then a statement separately. That is concoction. And it's purported and is, you know, uh, uh, you know, concocted to cause disaffection and overheat the polity. That is number one. Now, going by that statement, if assumed without conceding that such statement comes by some of my colleagues, it is just self-opinion. It is not binding on Nigerians. It's not binding on me. It's not binding on the party because PGF North is not an organ of the party. And it's not binding on Northerners or Nigerians generally. And let me quickly sound a note of caution to all Nigerians and advise some of my colleagues who may take it or leave it, that this is just a recipe to dividing this country further along ethnic or regional line. And this has been one of the bane of development in Nigeria and causing a lot of disharmony for each and every one of us in this country. This is not the right time to come up with such an assertion. Besides, APC have a leader in the person of President Muhammad Buhari. APC is the ruling party. 
APC have a chairman that is highly respected. APC have all leaders across board that are highly respected in this country. And we must, as a matter of uh, importance, we must respect the leadership of our party mm. and at least to a very large extent try to follow the leadership directive or direction. All right, let me quickly uh, get your view now. Uh, China Television tried to confirm this particular communication and uh, the signature of some of the governors, at least we did with two or three of them, uh, who confirmed that they signed and they are in agreement uh, to it. Is it because um, it's perhaps not in your favor? That's why you are disowning it. Um, Shell, let me tell you, anybody that knows it, Governor Yahya Bello today will know that there's only one favor that I always seek all days of my life up to this moment. It's, that is God Almighty's favor, not any human being. And that is why whatever I do, I put God first. Recall that this journey started almost two years ago when the majority of Nigerians came aboard, convinced me, and on my own, I was able to convince myself by telling God Almighty to support me because this journey is for the people and not for myself. It's not an ego kind of a thing. And then we embark on this journey and continued consultations up till this moment. It is not the favor of any human being that I am waiting for. Do you see I am it relying as relying on God yeah. and the people themselves? Do you see it as the some party kind delegates of, yeah. and party leaders by do, the special? Do you people. see it as some kind of betrayer? Because this is your own constituency, the northern governors. These are your closest friends within the governors forum in your party. And when they come and put up a position that is against your ambition and that of governor, uh, the governor of Jigasa, who is also in the race from the northern region of the country, do you see that's betrayal? Why don't you look at it as uh, a favor? Ah, good. It could be a favor. And I look at it as a favor. Because at the end of it all, as we speak right now, majority of delegates, not only from the north, but even from the south, as it may be called. But I will refer to it as delegates of all progressive congress from all across the country are already having a sympathy for Governor Yahya Bello. And as I speak with you now, our numbers have swelled up. Those who are going to elect me and make sure that we become victorious, even on the account of that act alone. So you, I am not in any way- You think that was targeted at, at you? Everybody have their own interest. My interest is to serve the people of this country. My interest is to fly the flag of APC as its presidential candidate and defeat, AP, I mean, PDP, defeat uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar at the polls. You can do that. By the special grace of God, right now, uh, Shino Kimbaloe, from the data we have, we don't have less than 27 million Nigerians, both young, women, and even old ones who are ready to vote Governor Yahya Bello when we secure the ticket of APC. Yes, and they are from both North, South, Muslim, Christian, and from all various backgrounds. And let me tell you, um, Sean, Mike was tested some few days back when few groups said, look, they really need to show their strength. And there was a simultaneous a rally across this country, over 16 million, just less than 24 hours notice, over 16 million Nigerians, youths and women throughout all of the state capitals and other cities across this country in support of Governor Yahya Bello. That is a strength. That is the strength of Nigerian youths. That is the strength of Nigerian young population. That is the strength of Nigerian women. That is the strength of Nigerians living with special needs. So if you're talking of whether I will beat Atiku, let me tell you. And I said this sometimes when I was running for my second term, when I was accosted by the pressmen in the villa and asked me whether I'll be, I'll be able to win my second term. And I said, no, it's not just victory we're looking at, but the margin of victory. And as I speak with you now, Sean, before 2 p.m. on the day of the general elections, we will be celebrating victory 
by the special grace of God. Okay. When I secure the party tickets. I mean, let's talk about how you hope to secure the party. Uh, I mean, when you were mentioning that you, uh, uh, your, the, the people who want you in office. So the question is, uh, you talk about the young people. Do you see yourself as the face of the young people? Today in the executive, especially at this level of governance, governorship level, by the special grace of God, I am still the younger, I'm still the younger one. So you are the voice of At, the young by, people? By June this year, I'll be 47. I am still the young of the young people, the voice of the younger generation, the voice for the women, the voice for the people living with disabilities, the voice for Nigerians, irrespective of your religion, irrespective of your tribe, irrespective of your region, because we have demonstrated it in Kogi State today. Right now, we are mourning those that were killed in Ondo State. In Kogi State, it used to be, a, I mean, of frequent occurrence before I came on board. It's already a thing of the past. For crying out loud, Sheung, those that were killed today, they didn't bargain for it. They have governor. They are Nigerians. They want to be secured. And they don't care where you come from. And you have the solution to the security, security. insecurity problems of Nigeria. I have demonstrated that well enough in Kogi State. And by the special grace of God, we are going to achieve it within the first 12 months of Governor Yahya Bello's presidency. We'll, we'll come to that in a moment. Let's quickly touch on a few business before, before we get into that. One of which is when you had a meeting with President Buhari, and as he asked um, the aspirants to go and make consultation and have a consensus. But he said a few days before then that the party and the leaders of the party should give him a chance of reciprocity to be able to pick his successor. Um, uh, the word on the street is that you are very close to the president. Do you see yourself as the president's favorite? I have always said it several times, and I'm not in the mind of Mr. President. I'm not a spokesman as well that Mr. President is always in love with those who carry out their duties diligently, serving the people, and the people are going for. That is number one. Yes, I am close to Mr. President, just like every other Nigerians are close to Mr. President, or every other governor is close to Mr. President. I wouldn't say I am the favored one. But let me quickly make a comment on that aspect of reciprocity by Mr. President. You see, our party is such, so blessed with men of wisdom. In the person of Mr. President, in our chairman, various other leaders. And when Mr. President said, look, give me a chance to you know, have a voice, and give me a chance to have a, a kind of input into who succeeds me, we governors have been given that opportunity already. And we took it fully. And then, why would we be fighting Mr. President to have an input in who becomes his successor? That is one. Two, this has happened in this country severally before now, especially in the southwestern part of this country, where leaders will anoint candidates. It has happened severally, and it's still happening now. So why is Mr. President, why the hula baloo? about Mr. President seeking and requesting and pleading with governors, with other leaders, that let me have input. He is the one that have eagle eye over each and everyone's performance. He knows exactly what Nigeria is facing today, what he's doing and what he ought to do and what he would want to do that he may not be able to achieve in office. And he is looking into the capacities the competence and the record of each and every one of us that are aspiring, let me be able to make an input. Then why all this noise? If we the are president, not fair uh, Governor Bello, him. if the president picks someone other than yourself, would you accept it? If it comes from Mr. President, President Muhammad Buhari himself, I will 100% support the person if I am not selected. If it is any other person, I will support the person because that is his wisdom. He knows better than me. He sees better than me. He received reports better than me. Would you prefer the consensus or your, uh, the consensus as arrangement, or you prefer to go for election? Any 
arrangement, I am ready. The most important thing is that, are you ready for this election? Like as I speak with you today, Sheung, the number of delegates on their own that have come to this town, who have on their own, on account of even the last yesterday's uh, purported letter that went out, is unimaginable. That is number one. So if it is consensus, I want to believe that Mr. President and other eminent leaders of our party will put things on the table and come up with a Nigerian, not a regional leader, but a Nigerian that will serve this country and secure the country and ensure that there is unity and ensure that there is progress in agriculture, education, infrastructure, and otherwise. So whoever Mr. President will come up with, I am 100% in support of that. And let me tell you, Yishon, it is not only me. In the dinner we had yesterday with Mr. President, almost everyone's remarks, aside the interview that was conducted by Chief Digi Oyegu, His Excellency, in the last dinner we had yesterday, almost everybody, in fact, 100% of us that are aspiring, have agreed that, Mr. President, whoever you choose among us, we are going to support Including Bala Tunubu. He was seated. He never objected. Did he agree? He was seated in the meeting, and he did not object to it. So if somebody speaks on your behalf and you don't have any, anything to, uh, you know, to, 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 to the contrary and you keep quiet, then it's binding on you. So yesterday, everybody spoke on behalf of various regions. Uh, His Excellency Chief Obuna Onu spoke on behalf of the group. His Excellency Bagudu, uh, uh, Governor Badaru of Jigawasi spoke on behalf of the, of the forum. And His Excellency Professor Yemi Osimbajo concurred, not only agreeing, but he concurred. Remember, he's a lawyer of repute. He's a professor of law, and he's the number two citizen of this country today. He concurred with that particular assertion. Okay, so, so if Mr. President come up today with a, a president, I mean, a successor or a candidate, and possibly the vice. Each and every one of us will flow. So of the 2,340 delegates, how many of those do you have in the bag? Uh, I can't say specifically how many I have in the bag, but I want to assure you that I have well over 50% of those delegates already in the kitty by the special grace of God. Your very close ally in your campaign, Mr. Fanica, they left your campaign. Do you have an idea of why he left? Mr. Fane Kayode is not a campaign, uh, is not a, uh, a part of my campaign uh, structure. He's a friend of mine. He's an associate. He's an acquaintance. He's a brother. He's somebody that respects me so highly, and I respect him so highly. And we have been dealing, we have been relating, and we are still relating. As I speak with you, yesterday he was with me. Today we'll be together again. We analyze the situation of this country, and we take common position. He was a deputy director general um, at some point, but it looks so much that he has deviated from his stance on the zoning arrangement. He feels that the next president of Nigeria should come from the south. I don't think... Do you disagree on those kind of issues? I don't think there is anywhere uh, Fani Kairi can be quoted for that. That he so that's not the point where he, he, he that, that's not the reason he left Fanny your Kayode is my friend, and he has always been with me, and he supports my political surgeon. And he has spoken and, about you and your ambition right here on the program. And he is still with me till tomorrow. But is he still in your campaign? I say he's a friend. He has never officially been in a campaign, in the campaign uh, uh, structure of my party. It was on, of that, my, of my, on, the, on the day of your, of, of your flag. Not of everybody your... that was there on my declaration are in the campaign. Friends, well wishers, and Nigerians from across various backgrounds came together to give their support that day. On that day, even though he didn't come to the, to the podium, the deputy speaker, Honorable uh, Boasi, was there. But is he in my campaign? No. Now, so the question here is the argument on zoning. For those who have argued that it should go to the south, did the president specifically say he wants it to go to the south? 
I don't know where Mr. President makes such, such statements. And I, I want to tell you categorically that going all, uh, judging from the statement that came out from his spokesman, uh, Chief uh, uh, Adeshina and uh, Laji Garbashehu, I don't think there's anywhere Mr. President makes such a statement. That is number one. Number two, let me put our mind on this. It is high time we de-emphasize on this issue of zoning, zoning, zoning. From day one, I've always cautioned. Here are victims of bomb blast or shooting in Ondo and several other parts of this country. Ondo is a town that is hosting the current governor of Ondo State, Chivakre Dulu. Mimiko, Governor Mimiko, handed over to him. No such bomb blast ever took place in Ondo town or in Owa town. He is from Owa particularly. Such thing never happened. Now what happened? Would those people be saying, oh, our person, our person, our person? No. See, let me tell you. In the country today, we are faced with insecurity. What Nigerians want is who will come and secure them. Out of these 26 million Nigerians who want to support me, who are ready to vote me into office today, and the number is still increasing, they cut across this country. Look at the last rally they held across the country. They know very well that I am a Muslim. They know very well that I am from Kogi State. They know I'm an Ibira man. They know I am from the North. And yet, by my performance, by my competence, by my desire, my innermost you know, quest to serve this country, driving and firing us, they are all out there to support me. They are not talking of zoning. You see people from Akwa Ibom, from Anambra State, from Cross River, from Rivers, from Oyo, from across the country. They didn't ask, where did I come from? So if Nigerian younger generation, the younger generation of Nigerians are trying to de-emphasize that dichotomy, and we still have some leaders, I refer to them as regional leaders or zonal leaders, are still emphasizing on this, then Nigerians and the delegates should better shine their eyes. It is high time we move past all of this. For crying out loud, we travel across the globe. If you go to America today, you don't care where Joe Biden come from. If you go to London today, you don't care where the prime minister come from. If you go to Dubai today, I don't think everybody even know who is the, uh, the, the supreme leader or their leaders there in Dubai and several other countries that we see. So why are we always holding on to this? I, it is high time our elites lift their knees off the neck of this country and let Nigeria breathe. Right. And I, by the special grace of God, will lift their knees off the neck of Nigerians so that Nigeria can breathe. So you want to fight the, cal the Kabars? I don't know of any Kabar. But you just spoke about I am something. out to win. I am out to fly the flag of APC. I am out to defeat PDP. I am out to be the president and commander in chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and provide leadership and provide security and provide unity and provide bring progress and prosperity right. to Nigerians. And that we have achieved, we are achieving in Kogi State. All right, we'll take a breather, Governor. And when we come back, we get your closing uh, thoughts on some of these issues. And afterwards, after our conversation with Governor Yaya Bello, we'll also be speaking with Professor Hafiz Abubakar on the Oshibajo agenda and the APC ticket. There's a lot that is happening behind the scenes ahead of the APC primary. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Our closing moment with Governor Yaya Bello of Kogi State, one of the presidential aspirants of the APC. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for your time tonight. Thank you once again. Uh, let's close the conversation because um, should you get a ticket, we'll get into some other issues as relating to how you want to uh, govern Nigeria if you get a mandate. But the question is, how, first and foremost, you're going to get the ticket of your party? 
Um, the likes of uh, Bola Tinubu, the likes of Professor Shibajo, should you get into the race for an election? What gives you the confidence that you can beat some of these people? First of all, I'm in the race. Not should I get into the race. I am in the race, and I am the candidate to beat. Secondly, not if I get the ticket. When I get the get ticket, how do I intend to go about my campaign? What gives and you the confidence the that you get a ticket? Uh, uh, I have 100% confidence that I will get the ticket. First, Nigerians, I have... It's all about who will win, first of all. Who will be able to defeat uh, Vice President Tiku Abubakar, former, and PDP. I took APCM in Kogi State. I, I took over from a PDP governor, where APC used to be about 30 to 40%. Today, Kogi is almost 100% APC. I was able to do that. In all of the elections I conducted, we have won, almost won all of it across the country. And today, the tempo, the language out there is the younger generation, changing the paradigm, paradigm shift from the older generation to the younger generation. Our fathers, our leaders have done quite tremendously well within their capacity. You can't continue to flog the horse that cannot go beyond its capacity and think you can win the race. So right now, it is the time for the younger generation. And even as we speak right now, I'm already grooming leaders within my state who will take over from me. And I believe this should be in the mindset of our leaders, of our fathers, founding fathers, as, and, the, and the rest, as to who will be able to take over this button and then mentor more leaders after them and after us. Mm. And I am the one that is going to bridge the gap between the old and the younger generation All right. and provide the hope that eludes us almost 30 years behind. And let me tell you, I was uh, shown, I am the only kind as, as parents that came up with a clear roadmap as to what we are going to do in this country. Time will not permit us to go into that. Uh -huh. But at a, later, at a later date, we're going to bring all of this out. Shem, let me just conclude. So please tell Nigerians, especially Nigerian, I mean, APC delegates, who are already coming in in their numbers, why we welcome them. They should put it behind their mind. Who is the person who bridged the gap? Who is that person that is going to provide that security and is doing it right now in his state? Who is that person who is going to build on the legacies of President Muhammad Buhari? Who is that person who will ensure that APC defeats PDP in the forthcoming election? Put aside the sentiment of where you come from, the sentiment of religion, the sentiment of who is this person, class difference. And that is Let's you. Put all of this aside and that candidate all right. It's myself, Alhaji Dozabello. Thank Go you very much. Governor Yabello, thank you so much, and I wish you the very best thank when you. you get into the arena on Tuesday. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.